Hey everybody, it's Mr. Chris, uh, Christopher Mick, our space guy. <laughs> I tend to get all of the uh, accolades in those three. Uh, I'm here again with another um, take and make video, kind of a hybrid video. So we're taking some of the leftover materials we had from our virtual summer camps. And um, I wanted to make sure all those materials that we uh, acquired were able to be used. And so a lot were used for the camps, but I had some leftovers of certain items and was able to repack those into take and make kits. So to make up for, you know, we had Zooms for the camp and kind of walk through the activity and gave some background. I thought I'd just record a short video to go with uh, the take and make kit um, because the way we had it structured, it wasn't very clear if you didn't take the camp, you know, just by having the bag, how to put everything together, what the science connection was to what you were doing. So really quickly, let me just share, uh, if I can get my screen to share here, I will show you um, a little bit of um, what's going on with your activity for this uh, kit. And I'll present it. So this one is called Visualize Our Galaxy. It was one of our very popular summer camps and I had enough materials to uh, get a couple additional kits together. So this one um, is uh, based on our Milky Way galaxy. So that's where our solar system is located. So it kind of is uh, concentric circles getting tighter and tighter. So if you start with the earth and the moon system, we are in um, our solar system where all the planets in our solar system are going around the sun. And then our solar system is part of our larger Milky Way galaxy. And we are in uh, one of the spiral arms of that galaxy. So for this artist concept, if you zoomed way, way out of our planet and our solar system and our uh, galaxy, and you're looking at it from overhead, this is what you would see. And then we're in this highlighted area. So our sun is in this arm of um, our Milky Way galaxy. And uh, that little circle you see um, are within about, uh, 2000 light years from our sun as this represents the circle. So this is all the things we've seen, uh, the planets we've discovered around other stars. Um, all those things are, are in this um, circle shown around our star. So we have found planets like some similar to our own that are around other stars in our general neighborhood of the Milky Way galaxy. So our Milky Way is huge, which is one of the things for this activity. So there's between 100 and 400 billion stars just in our Milky Way galaxy. And some people say, Mr. Chris, that's kind of a big range of numbers. Couldn't there be a more exact number? We're getting better at estimating the more and more uh, we look at our neighborhood and the rest of our galaxy with the space telescopes we have, like the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope, which will be launching here in a couple months. And so when we look at a certain section, we can get a pretty good count of the number of stars in that section. And then we can use mathematical models to say, for example, in this circle, if we say there's um, 10 billion stars in this range, then we can kind of do the math on how much would we have to multiply that circle to get coverage for our entire galaxy. So that number will get more and more accurate uh, as we observe more and more of our neighborhood and our galaxy. But that's the estimated range right now. It's no less than 100 billion, and it could be up to 400 billion stars. Uh, our star is one, or our, um, our galaxy is one of 125 billion galaxies in our universe. And we're uh, trying to refine that number as well as we go. So huge, huge distances in our galaxy um, is really big. So uh, 100 billion planets are just in our Milky Way galaxy, not counting the other galaxies uh, that we are studying and seeing if we can determine if there's planets uh, orbiting those stars. But this is an artist conception of when we are looking at another star, what um, that solar system might look like. So this is a earth type planet uh, that's been discovered around another star. And you can see the three inner planets uh, orbiting that star. And all solar systems are kind of different. A lot of uh, scientists thought that maybe our solar system was really the way this happened throughout uh, our galaxy and throughout the universe, that 
Uh, the smaller planets are kind of closer into the sun, the rocky worlds, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and that the outer planets would be the kind of gas and ice giants like we have, because then you transition to Jupiter and Saturn, which are kind of the gas giants. And then uh, Uranus and Neptune are the ice giants uh, they've been referred to. And then Pluto, you start to get into the outer edges of the solar system where it's called uh, Kuiper belt objects. There's this belt of the kind of leftover material from the formation of the solar system. And so that's why those of you that have kind of understood the story of Pluto, where it was a planet and it wasn't a planet, and what's the deal with that? A lot of astronomers have uh, kind of reclassified it. It's still there, it's still orbiting the sun. It's still a spherical object that has its own moons, but based on the, the information we found out in that zone of the solar system, that there's a lot of, a lot more Pluto type objects out there that are smaller, that don't meet some of the classifications of planets that we hold to the others in our solar system. So it's still there. Uh, you can call it a planet or not, depending on your feelings on Pluto, but uh, that's kind of the classic way we thought our solar system uh, kind of came together. And then that might be the way it happens all around the universe. But as we've, the exoplanets we've discovered so far are all different kind of categories. They'll have uh, huge Jupiter sized gas giants, very, very close in to the star. They'll have um, uh, super earth sized planets that are way, way out further in their solar system uh, and everything in between. So there isn't uh, like a standard formation to a solar system like we, we may have thought happens, uh, like our solar system, it turns out that there could be a lot of different things happening uh, on that. Uh, New Horizons, this is an artist depiction of the spacecraft that visited Pluto. So just to get your head around these massive distances we're talking about, um, it was launched around 15 years ago, and it's currently what we call 50 astronomical units from the sun. And astronomical units is a term that astronomers came up with just to kind of um, get a handle on the massive distances we're talking about and not have all these crazy long numbers, millions and millions of all the zeros. So for example, our, uh, the earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. So we thought that might be a good standard to say that's an astronomical unit. We are one astronomical unit the earth is away from the sun. So one astronomical unit in our case equals 93 million miles. We kind of use that as a yardstick to say, this is one for a unit of measurement. And then everything else we can kind of measure uh, distances based off of that. So when you say New Horizons is currently over 50 astronomical units from the sun, that means it's over 50 times the distance of how far away we are to the sun, if that helps you kind of understand that. Uh, the speed it's traveling at relative to the sun is about 36,000 miles per hour. So it's doing that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't take a day off for Christmas or take Sundays off because there's no wind resistance. There's not uh, any atmosphere out in space. So when you get something up to a speed, it's going to constantly go that speed. It doesn't need any more fuel. It's just going to keep going that speed because there's nothing to slow it down. If you uh, hit an asteroid or it gets too close to a planet, that'll change the direction it's going or may have a collision, but it's pretty much space is big and empty. If you send it a certain direction, it's just gonna keep going that direction. So right now while I'm talking to you, it's traveling 36,000 miles an hour away from the sun. And that's why that 50 plus AU number is just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. As you grow up and go through different grades in school, you can check in on the website, find out uh, how far away it is. It's still transmitting information back to Earth, but its main, main mission was just to get out to Pluto because we'd never sent a spacecraft to do a close observation of Pluto. So Pluto's distance is about 39 astronomical units from the sun. So it did that Pluto flyby a few years ago. It took about almost 10 years from leaving the Earth at that speed, just going right towards uh, Pluto to get there. So that lets you know uh, how far away Pluto is from us and, uh, and how hard it is to get a spacecraft there. But I got some amazing pictures. If you want to look at anything online, you can type in New Horizons or uh, do a Google search, New Horizons Pluto, and you can see some of the amazing uh, imagery it got back from that planet. 
now talking about your creations, uh, you have in your kit, uh, there's a all black umbrella and you will be able to uh, paint a Milky Way galaxy on that with uh, a reference photo we have. So some people have asked, uh, there's some other images I love from the Hubble Space Telescope. Can I do a different galaxy? I really love the colors on, on this uh, formation. And that's totally fine. We give you the information because this is the way I was trained. I was given one of these umbrellas and I thought it was a great idea to pass it along to do a project. So all the information I give you is kind of to uh, replicate and make your own Milky Way galaxy umbrella. But just throw a couple just photos in here. If you get captivated with an image, if you want to do a little bit of research on your own, you can type in Hubble Space Telescope. It'll give you a lot of images back like this and a lot of the galaxies and stars um, that the Hubble has photographed. If you really get enamored with one of those, you can totally use that as your reference and paint it like uh, what you discover in those. So tips for ensuring that it comes out the way you want. Uh, I recommend everybody to paint outside. The umbrella needs to be painted when it's in the fully opened position, like it's raining. Uh, you want that fabric very tight and you want it to be able to dry. So it's good to go outside to do it. If you have a front porch or a back deck area, you can put down newspapers uh, in case you drip any paint. Um, and um, you can also make stencils with this if you want. Uh, to create some patterns. If you have any spare paper or cardboard around, you can cut out some shapes and then use that stencil to kind of, if you're having a hard time making the uh, arms or a barred galaxy, the different shapes you're seeing, you can cut out that shape and then use that as a stencil. So when you're painting, it'll just be the, the shape that you're painting. So that's a tip on something you can do to help you with that. The other one is flicking your paint. So if you, um, I'll dip in here and grab one of your brushes. So your kit bag has a lot of, uh, several of these paint brushes like that. If you dip in a little bit of paint, a great way to get that star effect is kind to tap it against your finger as you're going down over your umbrella and it's gonna flick little bits of paint that look like uh, stars. You don't have to go through and paint each individual one. So that's a good tip. You get a little bit of paint on your brush and then just do this flick pattern, depending on how close or far away you do that flicking from the umbrella, you're gonna get different size, um, little globs of paint, so you can use that with the different colors. And you can also uh, do painting each individual one, but you wanna practice a little bit before you do that. So if you wanna use, again, a scrap piece of cardboard or paper and, and try a couple different styles of paint, and you can kind of see if that's gonna come out the way you want, because once you put the paint uh, on your umbrella, you're going to want to leave that. You're not going to want to wipe anything off. It's just going to smear and it won't come off cleanly from the umbrella. So practicing before you start is a good way to go uh, with doing that. You, all the paint you have in your kit is glow in the dark uh, paint. So a different style of paint. So if you uh, have your umbrella uh, inside after it's dried and it's done, if you kind of charge it up, as we say, under just the lights in your house or the kitchen lights, or if you want to put it closer, to like a table lamp or whatnot um, that will charge up the paint. And then when you turn off the lights or if you want to take it into your room and kind of do a planetarium show and you turn off the lights in your room, the paint will glow in the dark and you will see, which looks really cool because your galaxy, if you've done the Milky Way galaxy, it'll look like it's just floating in space there because you won't see the black of the umbrella. It's going to kind of disappear and you'll just see this beautiful image that you created uh, floating there in your, uh, wherever you have it, if you set it on a table, or uh, you slightly, you slowly kind of rotate it. You want to show it to your parents, your brother, your sister. Uh, it, it'll look pretty amazing. Uh, when you do paint this, uh, whenever you get started, you can come back to it. If you want to add layers to it, you want to let things dry and come back to it. But um, leave the umbrella open and leave it outside uh, to fully dry. Um, the more paint you put on, if you put on uh, thicker coats of paint, uh, that's going to take longer to dry. You can have a, a parent uh, or an older sibling help check it for you if you want to verify that it's dry or not. You can also come, if you have like a little piece of paper towel or a Kleenex, you can kind of dab it and see if anything is coming back off on the, the Kleenex or your paper towel. And if it doesn't, that's a pretty good indication it's dry. But you want to make sure it's left in the open position until it's fully dry. Because if it's got any uh, dampness at all and you close the uh, umbrella back down, 
parts of the umbrella fabric are going to be touching each other and your picture will change and it may affect it where you're not going to be happy with uh, what the new image is when you open it back up. And then have fun. Like I said, you can use the images that, uh, you'll, that are included in your kit. For reference, I'll stop sharing here and then we'll look at your, uh, your bag. But it's supposed to be just a creative. It's a STEAM project, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And you're really stressing the A. Uh, for arts, you know, in STEAM, because you're putting your creative uh, ideas into this. So let's look at what's in your kit bag really quick. Again, you'll have multiple paintbrushes in there, and that's for the different colors that you have, so you don't have to mix. Uh, use a paintbrush for multiple colors, and it also allows you to, another thing you can do if you want to get a finer point, again, you can get a, a parent uh, help to help you with that, but you can cut the paintbrush if you want to just get a few bristles on there so it makes it easier to make uh, stars and do that so you have multiple brushes to do that and then you have little jars of paint so some are labeled um, so you have different colors in each kit so this is like an orange phosphorescent orange and then a lot every kit got some uh, glow in the dark white you know basic white for either you can mix with a little bit of different colors to make a new color or just as a lot of stars look like little white dots to us here on Earth looking up, thought you'd want to have a good amount of white for doing that. So those are the kind of blank tubes that are in a bag and the new bottles are sealed. So you have more paint than you need, but you want to make sure the caps are on good when you're done if you want to use it. Uh, again, in the future, you're thinking of doing another uh, coat of paint with that. Uh, and you also have a little tube of uh, puffy glitter glue, which has a silver in it, uh, reflecting like little stars. So this gives a texture to it. So you have the paint, and then the kind of puffy paint, give it more of that 3D feeling. And then you can use this how you want. It's got the little applicator tip, it's the same thing. You could squirt a little bit out and use the paint brushes to dip it and do it. Or you can just be putting a few dots or uh, if you want to make, this is really good too, if you want to make one of the arms of the galaxy, you can kind of put this in and paint that, that arm as you're going for that. Then you've got some reference materials here. So uh, in your kit bag, you have a little night sky viewer. So this is to kind of tie in the science part of it. You can kind of see the arm of our Milky Way galaxy reflected on the star chart. This becomes more visible uh, to us if you're in a darker area at night. So the star chart relates to our night sky. So it's timed into the month of the year and the time of day you're looking. So it's got explanations on how to use it on the back. And if you stand out in your backyard, you can uh, line up and know what you're looking at uh, for the stars. And if you're in a really dark spot, if you get away from the downtown part of Hudson, maybe you've got, a, your family has a cabin uh, or you can go into some farm country. You've got relatives that live a little bit further out or a neighboring town. When you get nice and dark outside, that's what you can actually make out this arm of the Milky Way galaxy, uh, you can see, but it's got to be very dark to see that if there's any kind of light pollution around, it's not going to be uh, visible. But that's in there for you as well in your kit. And then some some inspiration photos, some reference photos. So these are some different images from the Hubble Space Telescope that can give you some motivation. There's that arm of our uh, Milky Way galaxy seen on an astronomy outing, pretty beautiful. It's the different galaxies here to kind of give you some reference points, some material with some links to read a little bit further on your activity. If you're into this and want to learn more about it, and then there's that reference image. This is the image that uh, my umbrella has on it uh, that I was sent by the Astronomy Society of the Pacific. So it does the same thing like that. Uh, photo it shows you where we are in the neighborhood and then that's your kind of photo if you want to use that as a guide for painting your umbrella so the center of your umbrella would be right in the middle of the milky way galaxy and then you've got that whole black umbrella to work with to fit in the arms and the stars and all that detail so that is what's in the kit um, and then obviously your big black umbrella. So it's got a little protective sleeve case to keep it. So it's a fully functional umbrella. If you don't have an umbrella, uh, you can use this throughout the seasons. Get into that rainy fall and all that. And um, 
Hope you enjoy the activity. We'd love to see your photos. I don't get to uh, with doing camps virtually this year. It was always fun to see uh, how people were painting the umbrellas and what uh, artistic choices they were making, what photos inspired them. And I'm not getting to see that this time since it's kind of uh, virtual camps and he's taken my kits. But if you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if you can take a photo or have a, a family member take a photo and like to share it with us, we'd love to post it up here and see what you came up with uh, for your idea. And I hope you enjoy the activity. And then we'll be doing more of these uh, with kind of uh, handing out these last materials I have left over from the camps. So be on the lookout for the next one and uh, hope you're enjoying your summer. We'll, we'll see you soon. Thanks.